In the previous lecture, we saw what is the value needed to start a fracture out of a wellbore. In this lecture, we are going to get uh, into the topic of what is the pressure needed for a fracture to propagate and what that pressure depends on. In order to simplify a little bit, a little bit the problem, uh, we're going to be talking mostly about the net pressure. That is the pressure in excess of the minimum principal stress in order to propagate the fracture. We know that at least in order to propagate the fracture, we need to have a pressure in the fracture which is equal to the least principal stress. In this particular example, uh, we have SH min as the least principal stress. And we have a fracture which is growing perpendicular to SH min with fracture height HF and fracture half length XF. So for this particular fracture then, uh, I made a schematic here of a, a horizontal cross section in the plane uh, northeast where we have a, an schematic of the fracture. I, I made a fracture uh, very wide here, exaggerated that to be able to, to draw inside. But remember that these fractures are going to be generally a lot longer than the width. All right. The net pressure needed to propagate the fracture is going to depend on several factors, but fortunately we can divide those mostly into three categories. The pressure needed in order to deform the fracture, the pressure needed in order to flow fluid through the fracture, and the pressure needed in order to create new rock surface. So let's see each of these in detail. First of all, we said that we're going to talk about the net pressure, so that's the pressure in excess of the least principal stress. And that additional pressure is the pressure that I'm going to need to keep this fracture open as the fracture propagates. Because the rock is going to have some stiffness, deforming the rock is going to take some pressure. And you could, for example, imagine, just to make it simpler, that because the rock has some compressibility or some stiffness, which is inverse of compressibility, in order to move the wall of the fracture from its initial position somewhere over here to here, you have to compress the rock. And that compression requires a pressure. And that pressure is what we're going to try to solve. Uh, you can also observe from this schematic that the pressure in the fracture is going to depend on the pressure of the fluid within the fracture. Now, this is where things get uh, very interesting because this is not just in an open mode fracture as you may have just in solid mechanics. This is a fluid driven fracture and the pressure on the wall of the fracture is going to vary as a function of distance from the beginning of the fracture till the tip and it's also going to depend on many other processes. So here I just made this general and, uh, and just wrote the pressure of the fracture as a function of distance because we know that that's going to be, to be a variable. Okay, how do we do it to solve that problem, to solve that uh, pressure? We have seen already uh, some tools that allow us to, to calculate the pressure or the stress needed to deform solids. Uh, we saw that uh, before in the problems of elasticity. And what we're going to do for uh, getting introduced and to get into right uh, analytical solutions about uh, uh, fracture propagation pressure, uh, we're going to use what is called the linear elastic fracture mechanic solution, and particularly the Griffith solution, in which we can imagine a fracture as just a linear crack within a solid domain with properties, for example, Jan modulus and Poisson ratio, where following also the same coordinate system, this would have a coordinate system X and Y. And 
in order to open that fracture, we need a certain pressure. And that pressure, uh, let me draw the deform configuration. That pressure uh, or the opening of the fracture is going to be proportional to the pressure in the fracture. Actually, this uh, pressure, or uh, uh, let me call it first the, the width of the fracture, W is going to be a function of X variable x and that width is going to be proportional to the net pressure and is going to be inversionally proportional to the plane strain modulus which depends on the young modulus and the Poisson ratio and how do we solve that problem uh, we know how to do that it's just a linear elasticity problem so if I have my equilibrium equations, my constitutive equations, and my kinematic equations, I, I can solve that problem. So here, what I will have to do is uh, to apply equilibrium equations, to apply constitutive equations, and to apply also the kinematic equations that are going to tell me uh, what is going to be the solution of that problem. I can simplify it to just a continuum mechanics problem. Of course, if we have fluid flow into the rock, that's going to, to require poor elasticity and it's going to be a little bit more difficult. But then at the end of the day, that's just going to be a, mostly a problem of mechanics. All right. So this is something that we know how to do and we can do, we can calculate that pressure needed to create uh, that width. But this is where things get interesting. The width of the fracture, notice that is going to be also the variable that defines what is the drop of pressure along the fracture for a given rate. And that goes into the second part, right? So this is going to be the width of the fracture and it's a function also of x along the distance uh, along the fracture. All right, so how do we solve now the problem of the variation of pressure along the fracture? We have a simplified solution for that. And that simplified solution consists on assuming that I have laminar fluid flow along the, the fracture. If that's the case, I could also make this problem simpler as I did in the first case and imagine that the fracture at the given section is going to be like two flat surfaces some parallel surfaces in which the velocity of the fluid within the fracture, if this is a laminar fluid, is going to look something like this, where the maximum velocity is going to be at the center, and this is uh, the fracture. All right, this is a typical um, a fluid mechanics problem, and we know the solution for that too. Uh, in fact, there is an analytical solution for these uh, flat surfaces in which the flow rate as a function of distance along the fracture is going to be proportional to the width of the fracture, a parameter that we had from the previous problem to the power of 3 times the height of the fracture divided the viscosity of the fluid times the pressure gradient along the fracture and let me write this in terms of differentials so this is going to be the pressure gradient where the pressure also varies as a function of x along the fracture that's what that flow rate is going to be and notice that here 
the flow rate and the velocity is uh, going to vary along the fracture. And there is something else that we have to consider. Uh, the solution of two parallel plates as a section is the one that we see over here, but the viscous losses not only happen within the fracture, but also happen within the porous medium. And that's going to be what is normally called the leak off. So the fluid that goes along the fracture and the injection rate I in the wellbore is going to divide into the fluid that goes into the fracture, but also on the leak off. And the leak off is going to be higher where the pressure is higher and it's going to get smaller as the pressure along the fracture decreases. We also know how to solve that problem, right? That's a problem of fluid flow in porous medium. And uh, uh, basically, if, for example, we use uh, Darcy, we know that the flow rate in the matrix of, of the rock is going to be proportional to the permeability of the rock, inversely proportional to the viscosity of the fluid, and is going to go in the direction of the pressure gradient. But we also know how to solve that problem. But notice that this is a coupled problem because these variables, they appear in different problems or in problems with different physics. First, solid mechanics, now fluid mechanics. Okay, let's continue seeing what's going on. We have uh, one more type of phenomenon over here, and this is the creation of, of new rock surface. Let's see what that is. In order to keep this fracture growing, as we said before, we need to have to keep the fracture open so the fluid can go through. As the fluid goes through, I need the pressure in the wellbore to be higher than the pressure in the tip, so the fluid goes from the wellbore to the tip. And also I need to overcome these viscous losses as some of the fluid gets uh, uh, lost or gets into the matrix of the rock. Okay, there is one more thing I need to take into account. And that is that I need to create a new rock surface in order to propagate this fracture. And that's going to depend on a property of the rock, which is called the fracture toughness. At the tip of the fracture, I need to know if the stresses are high enough so that fracture continues propagating or not. At the tip of the fracture, in order to have this fracture propagating, I should have tensile stresses which are high enough so that this fracture continues growing. And as we said, that's going to depend on what is called the fracture toughness. All right, let's see what that fracture toughness is. The fracture toughness is going to be a property of the rock and goes by the uh, letters or the variable name KIC or K1C. We'll see later on what that corresponds to. And basically, the fracture criterion here is uh, when the fracture intensity Ki is higher than Kic, then the fracture propagates. When the fracture intensity is less than the fracture toughness, then the fracture does not propagate. Where we know what is fracture toughness and fracture intensity is a variable which is defined as follows. The fracture intensity, Ki, let me write down that, Ki is defined as the limit 
of 2 pi r where r tends to 0 from the right square root of this times sigma yy at the tip plus an incremental distance r along the fracture. All right, so this, this might not sense or my um, might not make a lot of sense to you right now, but we're going to explain in detail in another video what this fracture intensity is and how we get uh, to this equation. Uh, basically, just to make it short, what we're trying to see here is at the tip of the fracture, what is the stress sigma y y and how that varies as we get closer to the tip so as r tends to zero i get to the tip and as i get to the tip the product of the square root of that distance times the stress is what is going to give me this value called fracture intensity Again, uh, we're going to revisit in more detail this later on, but the concept here is that we cannot use anymore the tensile strain criterion. And we cannot do that because when I use linear elasticity, we're going to see that the fracture, the stress at the tip of the fracture is going to tend to infinity. And, uh, and that's not going to make it possible to use tensile strain as a fracture uh, criterion. So instead, we're going to use this quantity called the fracture intensity and compare that to a property of the rock, which is a fracture toughness, where fracture intensity does tend to a, a value which is uh, well-defined and it's not infinity. Okay. But in summary, by combining this physics, the deformation of the rock, the fluid flow along the fracture and within the formation and the criteria for fracture propagation, I'm going to be able to predict what is the net pressure required to propagate the fracture. And what we're going to do in the following videos is to go in detail through the solutions of these problems in order to calculate that net pressure later on. All right, one more thing that I'd like to do is to highlight the presence of many of the variables that we are trying to solve being in all the three problems that we're using to solve the net pressure. For example, the variable width is a variable that depends on the deformation of the fracture, but that also affects uh, fluid flow and pressure drop along the fracture. Pressure is the main variable that is going to define this problem, and that affects the width of the fracture. The drop depends on the, how fast and the viscosity of the fluid, how fast the fluid goes through the fracture, the viscosity of the fluid and the width of the fracture and the same for the amount of leak off that depends on the difference in pressure between the pressure in the fracture and the pore pressure and also that affects the fracture intensity the fracture intensity here's the definition but that definition is uh, going to depend uh, on the net pressure and also on the fracture half length, which is the variable C over here. So all of these are interrelated. And, and one more variable is the fracture length. The width of the fracture depends on the fracture length and the fracture intensity also depends on fracture length. And here the fluid flow along the fracture also depends on the fracture length. So solving this couple problem is going to require to solve for many of these variables simultaneously.